Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. We certainly appreciate uh, you being here today. It's a good number for this Lord's Day. And for those that may be uh, watching us, we're uh, thankful that you tuned in to be with us and worship with us this morning. Uh, before we uh, get into uh, the service, I have a couple announcements that I, I need to make for you. First of all, after today, the front entrance to the church will be closed because we're going to be start working on the front porch that the church voted months ago to build. Uh, hopefully, construction is going to start on that this week. So after today, you'll have to come in uh, from one of the side doors here. So just until that uh, is completed. Also, on April 28th, uh, there's going to be a baby shower for Brooke Christmas from 3 to 5, inviting all the ladies of the church. If you hadn't received an invitation, see Ashley, Kaylee, Mimi, or Jesse uh, for that. Uh, also, want to mention to you that, uh, you know, we've taken up a, a lot of money and we've gone over. We know, but we don't exactly have the precise amount of what it is yet, so we'll get that for you, and uh, when, once we get that final total, uh, we'll let you know what it is. Also remind you that this Tuesday night, our WMU ladies uh, will be meeting here at the church. You're invited to come and meet with them 7 o'clock. They the one that uh, support this and get it going for us, and so if you can come that night, we encourage you to do so. Any other announcements that we need to make? Yes, sir. Deacons meeting right after church. All right. Anything else? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, uh, as always, as we'd already prayed many times this morning, that God, we're able to be here, able to come into this place. Father, I thank you for every blessing you give us. I thank you for all these folks, God, that come time and time again, Lord, to worship you. Father, I pray that today that, Lord, as we sing and preach and worship, that, God, somebody's soul might be touched, somebody's life might be changed. God, that's why we came today. For that one that may be going through a, a discouraging time, and they've seen better times. Lord, I pray you would bless them. God, that you would uh, pour your grace out on them, that, Lord, uh, their spirits might be picked up and might be lifted. God, we come here with a purpose, and that's to worship today. We come here with the worship to honor you with all that we say and do. So, God, we pray that you will be blessed by everything that takes place in this building. And I pray, God, that the Holy Spirit now will come in and, and join us as we worship together, God. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. For it's in Jesus' name that we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Mimi's going to come and lead us in our song, There's a Sweet, Sweet Spirit. This morning you stand as we sing together. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you, church. Children, y'all come on down, if you will, this morning. I got a 
little story to tell you today. Oh, come on. There you go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Good. Doing good? Doing good? Well, I just want to kind of finish up a story I started a week or so ago about a, a king named Jehoshaphat. Now, it came a time in his life when somebody told him that there were three armies out there that were fixing to come in and attack him. And so he didn't know what to do to fight off three armies. So he goes to the priest, talks to the priest or the preacher back in his day, and asks him, can you help me with what I need to do to keep those armies from coming in and, and destroying us? And the priest said the strangest thing. He said, this is what I want you to do. How many soldiers you got? And he told him. And he said, I want you to leave all them soldiers here. We ain't going to need them. How many singers you got? And he told him. How many people that pray regularly? And he told him. He said, so what I want them to do is I want them to get out, the singers, the play people that play the instruments, the flutes and the harp and stuff, and I want them to go out of the city, and I want them to go, and I want them to stand up on the side of the mountain. And you know what I want them to do? Now, where are the armies at? They're in the valleys below them, right? So the choir, the people that played the instruments, they all left the city, and they went up, and they marched up, and they stood on the side of the mountain. And you know what they did? They started singing. They started playing their instruments. They started praising God up on the side of that mountain. Well, who's in the valley? The armies, right? Guess what they started doing? When those singers on the side of the mountain started singing, guess what those armies in the valley started to do? They started fighting each other. And they had a battle down there. They never went into King Jehoshaphat city because they stood there and battled each other and killed each other. And so the singers, all they did was sing. But God, because they obeyed him, did what God told them. God intervened. God caused that to happen. Those folks sang and rejoiced to the Lord. And God saved those people saved Jerusalem, saved the city there. Now, the point of all this is this. As we grow up, if we learn to trust God, if we try to do as you grow up what God wants you to do, then God can start blessing you just like he did those people when that choir started singing. So when you grow up, I hope the older you get, the closer you'll get to God. And you'll understand him more because I know you're young now. But I pray that as the years come upon you, that you'll be like these people here. you trust him with everything you got. But that's going to take a little growing. Okay? All right. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for those times in your word when you show people that were in need and couldn't get by without you, that, God, you showed up. God, we can think in our own lives many times when you showed up that, God, sometimes in an unusual way, it could have been with the men and women singing on the mountain. It could have been with a preacher. It could have been with a friend that gave us a hug. God, but you show up in so many ways. God, I pray as these kids grow up, they'll understand who you are better. And the older they get, they'll learn that, God, they can trust you with their, everything they've got. Lord, I pray you'd keep your hand on them. 
Bless them, God, in a tough world. For it's in Christ's name that we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And we go. Go, baby. There we go. Enough? All right. Ashley, you got them? All right, y'all follow Miss Ashley there. <laughs> this time we're going to have an offertory prayer, and uh, Mimi will come and lead us, and uh, love lifted me, and our ushers will come forward and take up our offering. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Fathers, we come to you today, God, I'm so thankful. Thank God for every blessing you give us. God, I'm thankful that, Lord, as we, what we call in the church, sometimes just passing the plate. God, that we will realize that it is our duty to give and to tithe, Lord. Shouldn't be an option for us. So, God, I pray as we take up this money, that the hands of God and the Spirit of God would multiply it and would use it. God, for our mission work, for our church work, for all the things that need to be done. God, you've blessed us beyond measure. And God, we show that by returning back some of what you've blessed us with. Lord, bless us now. Bless this offering. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with us? Please, hymn number 546.
Amen. Thank you so much, church. Thank you, Mimi, for leading us there. At this time, Mandy is going to come and uh, have our special music for this morning. Sometimes I still try to take control Cause I get scared when I can't see the end And all you want for me is to let go Your parting waters Making a way for me Your moving mountains That I don't Thank you so much, Mandy. All he needs is for me to be still and listen for that voice of the Holy Spirit to come and tell me what I need to know. If you have your Bibles with you today, we're going to turn to the book of Hebrews. Now, we haven't been here in several weeks, but uh, we are going to wrap up this 10th chapter Today, because starting next Sunday, we will get into what many people think is the greatest chapter in this book, which is the 11th chapter, which tells us the story of the heroes of faith in the Bible. That's what it's known as, the chapter of the heroes of faith in the Bible. So I want to finish up these last few verses with you today so we can move into that. Next week, if you have your Bibles, let's read verse 10, the last four verses, please. I touched on this first one a little bit the last time I preached on this. For you have need of patience, 
that after you have done the will of God, that you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now, the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Father, thank you for the holy word of God. Father, as we wrap up this 10th chapter of Hebrews, Father, I thank God there is a several great messages that are in this scripture. God, may you speak to our hearts today. And God, if for some reason we are, we're close to getting there, but we never got there yet, a surrendering and, giving, and coming to you, that that's what this scripture is about. So God, I pray that you will just, just be here and touch us, let the Holy Spirit move on us, and God, I pray if there are decisions need to be made today, God, we'll be led by the Holy Spirit of God to make them. And Lord, we'll not hesitate. As he says in this scripture, the Lord will come. Thank you, Jesus. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In that first chapter, our first verse that we read, he said that you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, that you might receive the promise. Now, I actually preached on that the last time I was on here. You see, the temptation of many people, when life doesn't go their way, when things happen to them that really brings them down, one of the things that happens, is this going to do probably one or two things to you? Is this going to bring you closer to God, or is it going to take you further away from God? It always results in that. And we have to be careful, because he says that when this happens, be patient. Stay in the will of God, that you might receive what? The promise. What is the promise? The promise is that God says He will save us, He'll forgive us, and one day He will give us a heavenly home. Until then, we live in this old sin-filled, awful world, and there'll be times when we'll get distracted. That's what the devil wants to do. There'll be times when you go get discouraged. That's what he wants to do. But he says every time that the devil starts attacking you like that, do what? Hold on to the promise. Hold on to the promise that Jesus has made you about where all of this ends at when we're going there. He says in verse 37, this is actually where I really want to start, but he gives us, talking about in verse 36, the promises. Now, I've told you many times about the promises in the Word of God, that there are literally thousands of, of promises in God's Word. This is the keeper here. Verse 37, where he says, For yet a little while he shall come, he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. This is what most of the world does not know, does not understand, maybe not want to understand. That this world, and you've heard me preach. I've been here preaching for too long. Things are going to end. And what he says is this. And this is kind of where I'm seeing things. He says when it begins to end, what did he say in that scripture? That it will happen how? Quickly. Be patient. Because when it begins, there's going to be no turning back. When it begins, when God decides to come and take over and he has already decided, he just ain't decided when, or he's decided, but he ain't told us. And he starts the process. It will be quick, he says, and it will not, he will not tarry. But he uses the term, yet a little while. This is what 
throwed me for a long time. When was this written? 2,000 years ago. When the writer of Hebrews says, yet for a little time. Well, here we are 2,000 some years later and we're still waiting, right? Yet a little while. But we forget sometimes that God doesn't judge time the way we judge it. If that happened 2,000 years ago, thereabouts that this was wrote, written and preached about, and you need to understand one thing, in God's eyes, I think two days. Two days. A thousand years are but a day with the Lord. So they said, he's coming in a little while. I say it's probably closer now than it was then when he said that. Just a little while, he says. You see, it's amazing as I read this, and he used that term for just a little while. I thought about this. When you're young, say you 14 or 15 years old, how long does it take for them two years to go by so you can get your driving license? Seems like an eternity, don't it? Will I ever get to be 16 so I can get that? And then some young ladies, their parents say, you can't go out on a date until you get 16. And there's a 14-year-old girl saying, God, please, I like that boy. I want to go out and see him. He said he'd take me to the movie, but Mama won't let me go. Will I ever get to be 16? In my senior year in high school, I said, Lord, will this year ever get over? God, I feel like I've been here 10 years. I want to graduate. I want to get out of here. I want to go to work. I want to do something. I am tired of school. And it seemed like it took forever. But everything works in his time, though. Everything works in his time. And yet, a little while, things will happen. It will. It says in that scripture, that he that said he would come, will come. Now, however long you can take that to the bank. You can take whatever is written in this book to the bank, and he says he that said he would come in a short while will come. And we're waiting on that. I'm waiting on that to see the Lord Jesus when he comes and he takes back over this world again. It says that when it starts, And I told you this, and this is just my own little thing. I believe that God knows exactly when it's going in. When he said, I knew you before the foundation of the world was ever made. He knew you'd be born. He knew I'd be born. He knew everybody in here that would be born before, before Adam and Eve ever existed. The Bible says he knew that. So if he knew when it was going to begin, however long before he knew it, I can promise you that somewhere in the throne room up in heaven, there's a big calendar on God's wall, and there's a date marked on there, the end. It's just as sure as you're sitting here today, and I'm standing here today, Jesus is coming back. He closes this chapter. He that said he will will come, not may come, or I hope he come, or he should come, he will come back. So that's what he tells us in this scripture here. The Bible also says this. Remember he says when, it's, when he comes, he said in that scripture he will not tarry. The Bible also says that in a moment, and the twinkling quick as you can, quicker than you can blink your eye, he'll show up. We ain't got to have a big parade. It won't be no big parade. 
There ain't nobody, even he said, the angels in heaven, nor Jesus himself knows when he's coming. But God does. He shall come in a moment. The twinkling of an eye, just that quick, the world, as you and I know, will be over before we can blink our eye. It'll be a different world. It'll be a different time. We'll be the glory. But most people will be left behind here and never see glory. That's the sad thing about it. But that's what he's saying. That is what the Bible tells us concerning these things. He writes everything in the Bible in the light of eternity. It's what he does. Now, a lot of people, most people, they're not as excited as I am about Jesus coming. Now, that excites me. I ain't going to lie to you. And you know that. I'm excited about that. But for most people, they'll tell you what I'm telling you. It don't make a bit of sense. And it's a lie and it's not true. Well, then you say the Bible's a lie and it's not true. Because that's exactly what he said. He's coming. He said he is coming. He said that is so you he would come, will come. It's what he says. It will happen, and when it does, it will be instantaneous. Just like that, the world changes. Just like that, we could be messing around one day. We could be in church. We could be on our job. We could be sitting in the living room eating supper. We could be in the bed sleeping, and somewhere in the world, somebody will be doing all those things. There's going to be a shout. And all of a sudden, you go hear the blare of a trumpet, and just that quick, you go look around, and every child of God that loves Jesus has been saved, they're gone. Gone, gone, gone. That's what they are. I believe that. I'm excited about that. I am. That's just me. I don't expect you to be as excited as I am, but I wish you would. I'm like old John said in the last book of the Bible, so come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yeah, and when it happens, the Bible's very specific about that moment. That moment of the twinkling of the eye, that moment when the shout comes. Hey, cemeteries and dead people all over the world, ain't they? There's been people that's been shipwrecked, killed in military wars, that their bodies have never been found. But they're somewhere. God knows where they are. And if they knew the Lord Jesus, I don't care if they're 5,000 feet leagues in the sea. That, that, that trumpet sounds going to go all the way to the bottom of that sea. And the Bible says, boom, boom. The dead in Christ. Key being in Christ. Those that have died with their faith, have loved the Lord, have trusted Him. Those that have died in Christ are going to be the first ones to hear that sound. The world ain't going to hear it. The heathens ain't going to hear it. The people that were on the brink one time of coming to know the Lord, but they never took that last step I'll be talking about as I close this out, they ain't going to hear it. They're going to look around and say, where'd my husband go? Where'd my wife go? Where are my children at? And they're going to look around and realize what? We've been left behind. I don't know how many years ago, LaHaye and those wrote a book, The Left Behind series, if you ever read them or not. I've read them all. In a moment, in twinkling of eye, you could pick up a phone and call your mama, your daddy, your best friend, your sister, your brother. And there's going to be no answer from the other end. Why? They're gone. Gone, gone, gone. And then, just that quickly, as the graves open up, as those that are at the bottom of the sea, those that have been 
killed in these uh, earthquakes and all these things that they have never found their bodies. God knows where every one of them is. And they'll rise up too if they know the Lord. Secondly, those of us which are alive and remain, we will then be caught up in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's it, folks. God's church is gone. Everybody that trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're gone. There is not one Christian left on the face of this earth. Those that are alive are gone. Those that died in Jesus are gone. Up to glory. Where we'll see people like my mama and my daddy, like Lynn's daddy, people that I passed through for 45 years, they're waiting for us. What a day that's going to be. And it's all going to happen. This. So, Probably the last, I can't say I always did this, even as a preacher. But I can promise you probably for the last 10 years of my life, eight of them here, that I probably look more toward heaven every day than I ever have in my life. I look forward to that day. I don't know what has come over me, but I got that longing. And I look every day. And he didn't come today, but like a lady told me one time, I'll be looking for him tomorrow. Though. That's how I live. Because I know he cannot allow what's going on in this world to keep on going like it is. He cannot do that. So it's going to be an exciting day. Then he makes this statement. But the just shall live by faith. The just. Who's just? Those of us at some point in time in our life have asked Jesus to come in our heart, forgive us of our sin, save us. A wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. The just shall live by what? Faith. What did I tell you we were going into next Sunday? what they call the faith chapter of the Bible. And you're going to read people's names in that book. They were the people of faith, the heroes of faith in the Bible. They went through a lot of stuff, but they never turned their back on God. They lived for God. They were the heroes of the faith. That's what I want to be, a hero of the faith that looks to God, that has his name written down up in glory up there. The just shall live by faith. Now, remember what I tell you about them butts in the Bible? When I tell you a butt changes everything, you better believe it. The just shall live by faith, but what? If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Let me tell you what that means. There have been many people throughout the history of the world, and I was one of them for a long time, that came to church, went to church, listened to some great preachers, and my, I grew up under great preaching. And I mean, at time, I sit there just like you're sitting right now. And I thought, Jimmy, you need to listen to that preacher. And you need to go down there and talk to him. But I drew back. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. I would be there at the very edge just having this feeling, Jimmy, go down there. But I would draw back. But now the difference in me and what the Scripture says is, one day I got to the edge and I stepped on over. 
And I asked God to save me, to forgive me my sins. God did that. But there have been a lot of people in their life that were like I was, very close to coming and making a commitment to the Lord. But for whatever reason, they never take that step. It only takes a step to do that. And most of the time, if you take that first step, God does the rest of it. You don't even have to worry about it. You just have to take that step. He said in that scripture, Just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Y'all have heard me say this, and I've used this. You have to be careful with that word faith. Now, I've told you, and people that know me, everybody can have their opinions. What's your favorite book in the Bible? Um, what's your favorite scripture? What's your fa everybody can differ on this. And I was asked one time, what do you think is the greatest word in the Bible? And I've told you this. And I said, it's faith. I did a funeral last year where I got challenged on that after the funeral was over. That's okay. They were listening. Without faith, the Bible says you cannot be saved. Without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith, you cannot be the person God wants you to be. I used that at Mr. David's funeral. That is the scripture I used at his funeral. Faith. The Bible says, let a man... Be found, what? Faithful. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. When you stand before the Lord, he will not welcome you home. Don't turn back. If the Spirit of God is drawing you, because it's only through faith that you can be saved today. It's impossible for that. And so many people have been right on that edge saying, I know I need to do, I know I need to do it. But Satan will keep saying, no, you don't. Wait for another day. There's a lot of people here. Maybe you'll come a day where there won't be so many people. What are people going to say about you if you step out? Devil will put every obstacle he can in your mind to keep you from doing what God wants you to do and drawing back. But if you draw back, remember what God said, I have no pleasure in you then. That's a great scripture. Last verse. But, there's that but again. But we, the writer of Hebrews is talking about those that are Christians. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe in the saving of the soul. Ain't that great? That's all wonderful. What he's saying there, if God is talking to you, and there's not a certainty in your life, which I lived with for a long time until I, I got it straight, then you need to listen, and you need to pay attention. I'll guarantee you there have been a many people in this church over all the years this church has existed that have been on the brink of stepping out and doing what they need to do. But they just couldn't take that one step and they went out just like they came in. Can you imagine over all the years of existing Southside Baptist Church, how many have done that? How many have done that? But he says we, 
that draw back will not that we don't draw back will not be part of perdition. You know, coming to church can be a very dangerous thing because people will walk through these doors more so than probably any other place in the world. And they'll make choices, not only for here, but for eternity. They'll never think about this until they come through these doors here too much. That there is a heaven. God loves me. God wants me there. I hope you think of that when you come in to this place. But it's got to be more. That scripture says than just drawing near to God. Near to God won't get it. Almost there won't get it. You can get close, but never go through the door. And I believe churches are full. I was one of those one a long time. I was one sitting there just like you do. Close, but I never could do the commitment until God really Got a hold to me one day. I would, that would happen to anybody that was here. Because I'm reminded, and I'll close with this, that they, when, when the Apostle Paul, who as far as we know, may be the greatest preacher that ever lived, was the Apostle Paul. Paul would preach. Things would change. Folks would get saved. God would answer his prayer. One day he went before a king, and his name was King Agrippa. And he told King Agrippa about Jesus, told him about how he loved him and how he wanted to save him, and all he had to do was say, here I am. But the Bible says this. These are some of the sad, a preacher's saddest words that a preacher will ever hear. King Agrippa said to Paul, Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. I was right there. Maybe you should have preached five minutes longer. Maybe you should have sung another verse. You almost. And in the history books, in the religious books, there's not one word of evidence that King Agrippa ever made it to heaven. But he was that close. I'll tell you something. You don't want to walk out of here that close and turn it down. As we have our hymn of invitation this morning, one of the greatest tragedies that there will be in this world and the world to come is this. To be almost saved and yet be lost. To be almost saved and yet be lost. That will be of a greater tragedy than most I know. I'm almost on the way to heaven. But I didn't make it. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. That's me, me comes in just a moment to lead us in our hymn of invitation. I just want you to really think about what the Bible said and what I said. Almost thou persuaded me. I was preached to <laughs> for many years. When I got married with Lynn, to Lynn, she went three or four years to church without me because I wouldn't go to church. I didn't care about church. 
But one day somebody invited me. And I went. Did my life change right then? No. Did I sit under preachers Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and nothing happened? You better believe I did. That was probably when I was 20 years old. So for three or four years, I listened to preachers preach. I sit right there. I led the choir. I led the music in the church. But I did not know Jesus. What's the date? Anybody know? April the 7th. <laughs> April the 12th. 1972. Jesus saved me. 72. 52 years ago. But I just think about all those times I sit in that church and listen to great men of God preach. But I didn't want to go out because I was scared. Well, what, what's the music leader going to get out and get saved? Why come he ain't been saved if he's up there leading the music? Folks, those people do all kinds of things that ain't saved for God. So I want to say in closing, if you're here today, you just take that first step. That's all you got to do. I'll meet you. Don't get close and never take that next step. Don't draw back. Father, I pray now as we come to what may be one of the most important part of the service. It's God where we get a choice. God, I pray that you would keep our thoughts on you, not on other people that are here, but God, our relationship. And God, that we might ask you to forgive us. Lord, I thank you for that day, almost 52 years ago, when you forgave me. And my life has never been the same since then. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for someone here today that really knows deep down I need to move. Lord, let them come. Don't let the old devil, he's going to try to slow them down, stop them any way he can. God, let them know you love them. Let them be bold enough to step out. Lord, if somebody here is close, let them come. We're not asking to join the church. We're asking for to get their name written down in glory. Lord, may the Holy Spirit move and may somebody be touched enough to not almost be saved, but to be saved. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hymn number 315. I want you to turn that and I just want you to look. Get that, and I want you to sing. And if you're not certain about anything, and you might be scared, it's okay. If you just take that step, and I'll help you. Don't leave here. Don't get to the room.
bless you. Thank you for being here today. Why don't you come back tonight? I'm preaching on the subject of living in a world of chaos. And tonight, I'll be preaching on this. It's a very dangerous subject, but I'm going to preach on it. The truth about Islam. The truth about Islam. You come back and be with us and worship with us tonight back in the Lord's house. Let's have our closing prayer. Brother Jay, would you dismiss us with prayer, please?